fix errors, waste, and issues in a couple of clicks. Get alerted whenever you're off track. Sign up at trueclicks.com. Wix Studio, the platform for agencies and enterprises to manage clients and projects with max efficiency. Sharing Wix's SEO tech to help you drive growth. Really worried I'm going to let you down now. Okay. This is me. Hello. I am Claire. I am a local search expert at Bright Local. The slides are already live here. So if you want to take a photo of this now, then you can put your pens and pencils away and you can just relax while we run through everything. So um, I've got lots of different clients and um, I work with a zoo in Wales called Folly Farm Adventure Park and Zoo. So you'll see some animals appearing. There's one of my favorite goats called Daniel. Okay, so local SEO. So nice to see all of these people, all of you here today, because I think like me, you might be in love with local SEO. It's like regular SEO. We've got the local organic results, which look like this. But we've got these added extras and they're pretty fun to play with. We've got the local pack and the map pack. We've got the local finder. We've got our local knowledge panel. And it's today that I'm going to focus on those added extras and how we can think about the metrics that we need when we're looking at those added extras. And those added extras are very related to our Google business profiles. So metrics, they are a thing that we can measure. But why though? Why do we need them? Well, because we're marketers, and we're very used to having to demonstrate the return on investment of our time, the expense of using us and hiring us and having us. We need to report to our stakeholders. We need to ask for more. And sometimes that's because we're asking for more for ourselves, or it might be because we need more internal resource. We might need images. We might need assets, all sorts of things. And again, as marketers, we're also scientists. We like testing things. We like to know what works, what doesn't work. And we also need to think, well, what happens if? Because like everyone, we operate in this very exciting SERP landscape that is Google, and they will move things in and out of the SERP all over the place. So it's good for us to see how those things impact the things that we're doing. So today we're going to run through quite a few different metrics. But before we start thinking about those metrics, we need to think about who they're for. Are these metrics for our clients? Are they for the stakeholder consumption? Because we're gonna dive into quite a few different facets of Google Business Profile, and we don't want to give our clients and our stakeholders too much data that they're just gonna basically drown in. And we don't wanna put ourselves in sticky situations because if we are reporting on metrics that aren't actually important to the person, why are we putting ourselves in a position where we have to explain a, a change of the way that something is measured? It's just best to leave those things out. So what we use as our metric in part depends on who we're working with. So I work with three different types of clients. I've got my do it for me clients. A lot of them are small and medium sized businesses. They're busy um, delivering their products and services. They only really want to know things about how much money, you know, are we making with this? Is the phone ringing? Is anyone signing up? And then I've got those types of clients, but they've got a little bit more resource. So they might have an internal marketing team and they want to know about all of those things that I said before, but they also want to know a little bit more about what types of features are producing value. And then you've got teach me clients. So if you are delivering training courses to agencies or in-house, they want to know everything. They want to know all of those things. So rank checkers, you're probably using a rank checker. They're great because they show us our organic visibility, where we rank and where our competitors rank. So it might look something like that. But ranking is just one little part of the local SEO picture because rankings are not going to pay the bills for our clients and our stakeholders. So let's have a think about what actually matters to the businesses themselves. Um, I love this. This is such a good post. Uh, Dana, yes. Um, has written this, it's on 
either kick point or the other one, but have a little look at it. It talks about why you need to start every project with a goal charter. And when she talks about goal charters, she means really drilling in to what are your goals? You know, why do they exist? Why are we actually trying to measure things? And how will we know when we've actually reached that goal? So we're going to be on, uh, go beyond rank checkers and we're going to answer these questions. How is Google Business Profile actually contributing to your bottom line? Which parts of Google Business Profile are driving conversions? And which search queries um, are triggering Google Business Profile and they're going to be low hanging fruit? We can make more of those. So we'll have a little think about where those local SEO metrics live. So. Again, we're SEOs, they appear in some very familiar places. So we have got Google Analytics 4. Hands up who loves Google Analytics 4? Oh, okay. Uh, we can see our data in GA4. We can see our data in Google Search Console. We still love Google Search Console, don't we? Yes. Okay. But to see your data in those places, I couldn't not mention UTM tagging. You need to make sure you UTM tag up all your URLs that link away from your Google business profile to your site. And you've done that, haven't you? Yes. Okay. If you haven't done that, there is a new version of this uh, Whiteboard Friday coming out in May, I think. Um, and I have updated this post on my website, which runs through a template for UTM tagging, all you need to do is drop your URLs in your URLs in and it will give you the UTM tags. So we've got those places. We know a GA4 sort of uh, Google Search Console, but we need to look in some other places. So we have got what was insights because Google loves changing the names of things, which is now your performance data. So you can access that via the NMX or whatever we're calling it this week, the, the, the place where you go and get the information in the SERP. You've also got third party tools, you've got bulk downloads, you've got via the API, lots of different ways to get that data. And then if you're using call tracking, you're going to need to get the data natively from those providers. You can also get that into um, GA4, but you're going to also have a different collection of data for that. So the metrics, what are they? Let's look at the ones that the client really wants to know about. So your stakeholders, these are going to be the things that are like, yeah, I want to know those things. Are we making money? How many times does the phone ring? So if someone clicks the button in Google business profile, hooray, they're probably calling because they want to do some business with you or shows really good intent to, to do something with you. We get those metrics from Google business profile performance. It gives us um, a certain time set that we can get the information from there. We've got the call tracking, call rel, those are the ones. And then we've got click to call via our website. So if someone comes to our website via Google business profile and then clicks to call, takes an action on our website, we need to attribute that to Google business profile because we've done the work for that, for that potential client. And we can see that in Google analytics for, and again, we'll need to make sure we've UTM tagged for that. So when you are reporting to the client or the stakeholder, you might choose to chuck all of that in one bucket or better still, you might actually report separately because when we do that, we can see if there have been any changes and we can start to diagnose what problems might, you know, wh why, why did it become more? Why did it become less? And we also need to know that our Google business profile calls are not the same as call tracking and they're not going to be the same as click to call because they're all measuring different things and using different uh, measurement protocols. So it's really important to think about directionality by the data set, not across data sets. How much money are people spending? It's easy to see. If you've tagged up your UTM codes, you can go into GA4, you can apply the filter, which is just traffic from Google Business Profile. This is uh, an attraction that I work with and you can see very quickly that it is driving lots of spend. So if we have a bricks and mortar store, they want to drive people into store, but how do, we, how do we measure that? Well, it is a little bit more tricky, as you can imagine. If you are incorporating your third party booking provider into Google business profile, a booking that shows good intent to come and visit. So we can use those metrics again via insights driving directions that shows a good intent to visit because it's someone clicking on the directions button. Here we go. That's what it looks like. 
But we need to remember with that one, Google does a bit of a funny thing because when it buckets those driving requests, it does it by postcode or a geolocation rather than by business. So this is what happened to me when I moved my office from an attraction, which had good footfall, to a, um, a co-working space, which had less. So you just need to be aware that when you make changes, it can affect the way that, Google, that, that we get that data. Off a post, you can add a little code at the bottom. So if someone comes into your branch, they can give you that code. And this was um, an interesting study by a chap called uh, David Watley. Is, is he here? He lives in... No. Uh, he works at My Shop Local. And what he did was he did this really interesting test with Google Business Profile posts. And he had a test set that didn't run them and a set that did run them. And he found a 63% difference in units sold on average for the store that had the offer post. It was something like nut milk or something. But using the point of sale information, plus looking at the fact they'd run these posts, it had a, a huge uplift. Reviews. People want to know, am I getting reviews? And are they good normally? So we look at things like review count and we look at the average rating. I like to use um, Jepto, which has a really good um, Looker Studio template, but basically it is a data warehouse for all your data from the API. And then you can pull that data down and slice and dice it in any way that you want to. I find that a really, really good framework for looking at, at uh, multi-location. How many leads am I getting through Google Business? business? Who, who runs Google Business Profile Messaging? Has anyone actually turned it on? Okay, well, super duper. I love it. Um, is it worth the investment? It is a bit of a pain to actually resource um, as a business. So you need to think about your target market's communication preferences because this is me. Um, I'm sorry I didn't answer your call. I don't use my phone for that. So if I've got the choice between messaging a business and knowing that I will get a reply, I'd much rather do that than talk to someone on the telephone. Um, and a message does usually equal a lead in my experience. Um, this is, a, an, a, again, an attraction provider and a, an adventure activity provider. They want to pay money. They want to come and give you money to do something but you also do get messages like this. So can I sell you some reviews? And here is some fan mail for Folly Farm with someone's little poppy thing. Um, so what percentage of your Google pres uh, business profile messages were leads? Uh, we can use that Google business profile data. We can calculate it manually, our leads versus the number that we ha that had, the number that converted, and then we balance the benefit um, against the cost of the business. We need to remember to mark that spam accordingly because you, that, you know, if you don't, then that will be a message that you haven't replied to. Respond to all of those real messages and respond in a timely manner because if you don't do those things, you can get a very sad email from Google, which, which means they turn your messaging off um, until you promise to, to do it really nicely. And so let's have a look at the metrics for us, the local SEOs and the marketers. I really, really love reviews. They are like a window into the soul of the business. You can really get a feel for how their um, audience and their customers are feeling about them. Once you get um, a certain number of reviews, Google puts together place topics. So that is based on um, the sense that it makes of the words, the, the textual content of your reviews. So they're a really good place to have a little look at pull that data out and understand whether those are positive things or maybe not so great things that you could improve on. You could also take the entire textual corpus of your reviews, run it through an engram analyzer, and then that will spit out some information about some like topics and themes that are coming up over and over and over again, which obviously is useful for us. We're working in improving products and services. And then we're going to get granular with our revenue and our conversions because we've already said to our clients and stakeholders, hey, look, Google Business Profile is making money, but we haven't told them which parts are actually driving those revenue and conversions. So we've tagged up our links and we're lucky with Google Business Profile because we can still add quite a lot of links. We've got our primary business link. Um, if you've got a business that runs activities, you get to add those in your business profile. They're very beautiful. Um, admissions, products, 
Google posts. And again, just pull all of that information into a Looker Studio report and you can see what is delivering value. And then let's look at that search console data, because again, as SEOs, that's something that we do spend some time looking at, understanding the search opportunity, understanding search volume, new and emerging and zeitgeisty key, key, key phrases that we might be able to target. So search call console allows us to bucket our search queries, and we can do that in any way that we want to. So if we only want to see Google business profile visibility, that's where we need to add filters. So in um, Search Console here, I just want to look at branded. So I'm going to say queries that include the branded terms. I only want to see landing pages that include something that is my parameter, basically the way that I set up my UTM tags. Non-branded, very similar, apart from the fact that we are now excluding those brand terms. Oh, this is fun times, isn't it? Yes. Disambiguation issues. If you're calling your business stop sexual abuse law firm or sexual harassment attorney, Google doesn't see you as a brand. So when you're trying to work out your branded and non-branded search terms, it doesn't really work. So even if you're going to go a bit, let's just cram loads of uh, search queries into my business saying, please have a brand as well. Please add a word, which is brand, but don't do that anyway. Okay, and then you might have like a nice topical bucket. So if you're thinking, right, I want to do like boat trips or whale watching or whatever it is that you want to bucket, then you can do that exactly the same way by adding that filter. So if you want to grab that template, that's there. Obviously, you're going to have the slides. All you need to do then is tweak the filters according to your brand and the way that you have UTM tagged up your URLs. So it took me a while to find this tweet from Melissa. Do not Google low hanging fruit on Twitter. It's not nice, um, <laughs> but I did find it. So this is something that SEOs love, isn't it? It's like, okay, what have we got visibility for that we could have more visibility for if we just went ahead and optimized? So if we have a look at those queries, when we say high volume, what does that mean? It doesn't need to be high volume. It just needs to be high enough to make a difference to our business and we need to convert it. Good conversion prospects and they're ranked four to 15. So outside the three pack and we'd like to see a little bit more visibility. So that's where we do our SEO magic. You know, when the client says do the SEO magic. So these are the magic things that we do. Do the on-page stuff, do the links, internal links, actually use the words on the page. So that's the magic that we go ahead and do. And we're gonna monitor those non-branded and topical queries over time, or even the branded if we're doing the PR, because those are the things that we can say, well done to us, we're doing really super well and we're getting all this increased visibility for the client and for the stakeholder. So metrics come and metrics go. In the last year, we have seen a lot of metrics. We've waved goodbye to them, if you're interested in these things. We had the new follower offer that everyone hated, apart from me. Uh, Geodata in driving directions, query bucketing photo views, views and clicks on Google posts. Those are things that used to come out of the API. No more, we don't have those anymore. So we need to think about well, what we'll, you know, let's think about the real metrics that we're gonna report on. And who knows what comes next? If you keep an eye on how GA4 reports and what we can pull out of there, and you look at the Google Business Profile API to see what new things might come out of there, all of you sad people that, well, not you're not sad, you're lovely people, but I just mean you are just like, I don't love GA4. Look at this. It's the, the free course from Dana, which is on Bright Local Academy. It's really good. I love it. And... If you really, really want to get super good at GA4, 20% off of her course, which is the GA4 for marketers one. So that is valid, I think, for two weeks. So you do need to act quickly on it, but another awesome course to really upskill in GA4. So <clears throat> that felt like a lot. Let's wrap it up. Um, metrics are super important because we want to stay gainfully employed. They help us demonstrate return on investment, secure budget, and all of that good stuff. We can get those local SEO metrics from a big range of sources. 
They come and they go. We mustn't fixate upon one thing. We need to keep revisiting what's important. And we need to interrogate the metrics and not blindly follow the metrics because sometimes we have measurement protocol changes, which is just going to basically turn that data on its head. And then finally, to you, from me, a gift with love. So this is a Google Sheet I put together with all of those metrics, which tells you uh, where to get them, why you would need them, and a suggested um, amount of time you should leave between checking them. And that's the end. Thank you very much for listening. Demand Sphere. Limitless visual insights from the SERPs. Unlimited dashboards and users. Easy to use and easy to scale your growth to new levels. Monthly reporting making you want to shove sharp things up your nose? Try Dragon Metrics, the all-in-one SEO software with mind-blowing reporting tools. 